Hey, what's going on guys? My name is ADC Art Attack. Welcome to today's video. Today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the supplies and everything that I use to create my artwork. And uh, today you can see a little example of something that I'm working on right now, which is a tutorial on how to draw Super Saiyan 4 Goku, um, including some coloring with pencils. So yeah, that's exciting. Uh, so yeah, I figured I'd take this opportunity um, to finally showcase, you know, what I use. Uh, it's a question that I get asked a lot and hopefully it can help out some of you guys. Um, I am not someone who really cares about particular brands or buys into certain things. I just use whatever works for me and over the years I've discovered some things work, some things don't. Um, so yeah, I'll try my best to say what I'm using currently. Um, by that I mean, you know, in the past few drawings that I've done, it may change in the near future, but yeah, so let's get on with this. So um, starting with this, I guess I'm gonna start with the paper that I'm using. Now this is a sketch paper and I've actually only just started using this. Uh, this was sent to me by the guys at Arteza. Um, yeah, they sent me this, a whole bunch of things to review and use, and um, I really like this paper. So I figured, yeah, I'm gonna be using this paper a lot more, so I will showcase this as one of the things that I use. So if you wanna get any of this stuff, by the way, I will put a link in the description down below. You can head over to the Arteza website and get some of the stuff. Um, this video isn't a plug for them, by the way, so yeah. Drawing pad, that's what I'm using right there. Um, the most common paper that I use is this. Um, now, it's not necessarily this brand of paper, but Bristol board is what I use um, for most of my drawings, and it is my most preferred um, paper to use. Uh, the reason being is I can use mixed media on it, and it works pretty well. It does fold a little bit if you use watercolors on it, but um, it yeah, it, it just works really well. I love working with it. It is very smooth, so you do sort of need to get a little um, a little used to it if you're not familiar with it. So yeah, there's those. Um, what else can we do? We'll look at the little miscellaneous stuff right here. So we've got a Faber-Castell um, sharpener, which I didn't actually purchase. And the way you use this, you just crack it open. There you go, there's two pieces there. Um, yeah, I didn't purchase this. This is actually my girlfriend's. I stole it from her. She might kill me, who knows? But um, yeah, so Faber-Castell sharpener. Again, nothing important. I have an electric sharpener. I have a handheld twisty sharpener. I have a little cheap one that you can get from the store for like, I don't know, 99p, 99 cents, 99 euros. 99 euros? Um, sorry, 99 cents, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a little cheap one as well, it, it doesn't matter. Um, my Pentel P205 um, pencil, this is a 0 0.5 millimeter, and it's just one of those little clicky ones that you click and it extends, and then, yeah, you just push it back in and there you go. Um, I've been using this for about four or five years now. Um, it is due for an upgrade, I think, because I bent the tip, but um, yeah, I did, this is reliable, it's very light, um, which may be a downside for some people. I do like a bit of weight behind my pencil, but yeah, this one works really well for me. I like it, and as I said, I've been using it for the last five years. So there you go. Um, Fabi Castor Eraser. Again, my missus. It's not mine, but this is what I use um, because I'm, you know, too cheap to buy my own stuff currently. Uh, so there's that. Um, the markers that I use. Now, I get a lot of this all the time. People, people want me to use Copic markers. People mention Copic as the best brand and things like this. I've tried Copic, I've tried um, Prismacolor, I've tried Sharpie, and the one that works best for me, and this is a personal preference, is um, Promarker. Uh, well, specifically the brush marker of the Winsor Newton brand, but um, yeah, I use Promarker as well. And uh, yeah, if you wanted to know about these, uh, basically the Promarker, the difference between Promarker and a brush marker is the tip. So um, Promarkers have a bullet tip right there, and um, the brush markers have a brush tip. Now they have uh, different uses and different things. I actually do prefer using these all around because the chisel tip on the end sort of provides me with, you know, if I do need to use the bullet tip, I can use a chisel tip. So yeah, the only reason I have the Pro Marker variant, for example, this one is because I couldn't get the brush marker variant. So I would just stick with brush marker if they had all the colors available. Um, I do have other markers such as Style File, which yeah, I'm not sure how common they are. Not a big fan of them to be honest but you know the the brush is very huge they're good for large pieces but and the pigment is great but uh yeah i don't really use them too much so i won't put them there and also i do have some prisma color um again you know the colors are great but there's i don't know they feel a bit too they're sort of too big for a start they're very huge as you can see there's oh it's not even that much difference but there is a little difference and it does feel noticeably bigger uh, maybe it's thicker as well. I don't know, but yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of these, as I say, over my um my brush markers. And then I have um the Copic markers. Now I have Copic Sketch and I have Copic Chow. Um and again, these are things that I do use and I do very much like the brush on these. They get they got a very nice thin tip on the end, which is ideal for very many things. So I do have a use for Copics, but I have a problem with them that sometimes they do bleed. 
and or they sort of like burst and if they do that and you've been working on a piece for about 20 hours then you have a problem on your hands because if one of these bursts that's it your piece is ruined so that's why i don't really use them now and um, that's why I stick with these, because I haven't had any problems with bleeding. I do have some spitting problems, I will say that. Um, if I use a dark color, for example, with Primarca, let's say like the purple or the indigo blue, uh, they do tend to scratch a little bit. As you're coloring, you get like these little spit marks that happen, and it has ruined a few of my pieces to the point where I notice it. I, you probably won't notice it in photos or in the video, but I see them. If you look very closely, you do see them, and that sort of bugs me a little bit. So moving on, um, you guys always ask me this question. This is one of the most popular questions I get and it's how do I do the electric effect on my drawings? Um, so yeah, when I do electric effect, I literally just use this. I just use a, a out of focus pen. Yeah, I don't know what this is. This is a jelly roll pen. I, I don't know. It's just jelly Japan. I don't know what this is. But uh, again, it's not mine. It's my, it's my girlfriend's. But um, I just use that and it's just one of these rollable tip things. And yeah, I just use that on top, just to do the lines of the electric, and then I just use an airbrush to spray over it. Um, airbrush, well, I won't be featuring that in this video because it's sort of packed up as we're moving, and yeah, um, in terms of the airbrush, I got a very cheap airbrush, I didn't get anything expensive. Um, she bought a compressor for us, and it was like, I think 60 euros or something, and I bought a very cheap 20 euro, like one of the cheapest guns that you can get on Amazon, so there's that. Now, my outlining. Now, uh, yeah, I pride myself on my outlining. I do like to outline it. It's one of my favorite things and probably one of my strongest points of my work. And uh, yeah, so I use Unipin fine lines and are they gonna focus? There you go. Um, 0.05 is fantastic for doing features on faces. I do like these. This is sort of that, uh, the thing that I use for the inner features. But I will say, if you're gonna use these, you can't scratch with them. You can't sort of draw like that. You have to draw in a steady, smooth line. It needs to be quick. Um, and you, you pretty much have to do that again with the 0 0.1 and with the 0 0.2, or I don't have that on my hand right now, but 0 0.5, um, yeah, from 0 0.2 onwards, you can sort of scratch a little bit and get still get smooth lines. So uh, yeah, uni pin, they're there. Um, the coloring pencils that I'm using. Now, before I got sent these by Arteza, I was using Prismacolor pencils and I can show you my Prismacolor set. One second. Yeah, so I got this set and I've got like the other big, huge set and I've also got the manga set. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if one set is suitable for everyone. I don't know. I have all of them. Uh, again, something I didn't purchase myself, but yeah, um, they, they're okay, but I do have a big problem with Prismacolor pencils. I hate them, if I'm honest. Uh, they're very waxy, and they just don't work for me. Uh, they do work for some people, but for me, they're just too waxy. They break easily, and I don't like them, if I'm honest. Uh, I am now using these Arteza color pencils. Now... I've got to be a bit biased here, um, as they sent them to me, so I guess it's sort of like a bit of an opinion. You know when you don't pay for something, you sort of have a bit of a um, biased opinion towards it. Uh, but, yeah, I'm using this to do that, that drawing that I showed at the beginning, and um, they're working fantastic right now. They're not waxy, they sort of do have a little bit of wax, but it's a fine line between, say, Faber-Castell, which are very hard, um, the Faber-Castells and the Prismacolor, there's sort of like in between that. So you do get the best of both worlds. I still would say that Faber-Castell I'd probably prefer, but um, I am loving these pencils and I'm not picking up any faults with them. Um, they've got a nice bit of weight to them. They're not heavy in any way. I also like the way that the names of the color go down the middle here. So when I'm coloring in the video, you guys can actually see the names of them, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, a variety of colors and uh, crack them open so you guys can have a look. They come in this sort of nice little box and this nice little grip here. I'm so happy that this is a thing. You can just pick it up like this and take them out and see the next layer. Like, every paint set that I get always has these two little things here or there and you just sort of have to dig underneath it and you can't really do anything. These have little pinchies so you can get them out. I, I like that. So that's cool. I like that. Um, yeah, there's really not much else to show. I'll show you my watercolor pens that I used recently and again by Arteza. These guys sent me so much stuff, which is pretty awesome. And uh, yeah, these are my watercolor pens which you guys saw me use, the real brush pens. And um, yeah. They're fantastic. I, I can't praise these enough. I'm loving these. Uh, very, very nice to work with. So, yeah, they're great. Um, and the way I use these, I dip them into water as long as I need to really. Just, you know, usually a second is enough. And then I can just do like a water or color effect. And it's really, really easy to use. So, yeah, um, that being said, there's, there's really not much else that I use. That is sort of my art supplies. That's everything that I do. To record my videos, I guess you guys probably want to know that. Um, the camera is plugged in, so you will get a bit of a light here. But I use the uh, Logitech HD 1080. So this is the C920, I think it is. C920 camera. 
and this is what I use to record my drawing videos. Um, yeah, I, there's nothing else. I have a blue snowball uh, microphone, and uh, right now I'm recording from my phone, which is a Sony Xperia, some kind of premium thing. I don't know what it is. But um, yeah, there's not much else for me to say about this. So that's my art supplies, guys. I hope it's informative. I will put links to things that I can find in the description down below. And uh, yeah, just to briefly say where I got these things from, uh, because I know that is a big thing as well. Um, pretty much all of my art supplies come from a local art store. I'm sorry to say uh, these are from a local art store. You can get pro markers and, um, and brush markers on Amazon. They're usually about three euros or, you know, whatever your currency is. I don't know, five dollars or something. Um, so they're pretty cheap for the pens. They're actually a lot cheap. They're one of the cheaper pens on the market in terms of quality and stuff. So they're really good. Um, yeah, Faber Castell, same thing from the local store. Uh, I got these from Amazon, uh, uni pens. You can usually get individual pens or you can buy a full pack, which is pretty cool. Bristol board, again, local store, but you can get it on Amazon. The brand of Bristol board really doesn't matter. I don't ever get the same brand twice. I just buy whatever I want. Although, is it De La Rowney? I think it is. Um, they do have a fantastic um, Bristol board and also Strathmore as well. So that's something to look into. Uh, to get the Arteza stuff, uh, there's a link that I will provide down below. And that's an affiliate link because obviously they sent me some stuff. So if you guys click on that and purchase through my link, then, you know, I get a little something out of it. Um, so yeah, there's that. And um, with that being said, guys, I don't have anything more to tell you. There's nothing more to say. I am, um, yeah, I will be doing a cheap art supply video coming up soon using Bic um, pencils, which... Uh, there they are, which are these, and they cost $2.99, and you get all these color pencils, it's pretty cool, so yeah, that's something to look forward to, but I probably have to wait till I move house to be able to do that, because I'm in the middle of moving at the moment, so all that being said, guys, I'm going to take off now, I hope this was somewhat informative, I know that there's not much, and it's not flashy, and there's no crazy editing, but, you know, it's an art supply video, I don't really have much to say about it, um, yeah, take it easy, guys, and I hope this helped, I'll see you in the next video, bye-bye.